Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Scents. Hope you're doing really well. Today I'm going to be covering a fragrance house that I've never talked about on this channel before, Bortnikov. I'm also going to be doing a giveaway where two of you out there walk away with a bunch of different Bortnikov fragrances, so stay tuned for that. I've got 12 different scents to cover here, and I don't want this video to run on forever, so let's just jump into it. So two of these I have the full presentation on, these right here. I picked these up, one from the Bortnikoff website, one from Max Aroma. And then I have a whole bunch of eight mil travel size atomizers here that Max Aroma provided that I'm gonna give away to you guys. So a whole bunch of these, 10 of them to be precise. So one of you will win five and the other will win the other five. That's 40 milliliters of Bortnikoff fragrances. Now I know what you may be thinking, oh, well that's not really a whole lot. Ooh, kind of is. 40 milliliters of Bortnikoff is actually a good amount. You can go onto Bortnikoff's website or on Max Aroma's website and see how much an eight or nine milliliter atomizer is gonna run you. It's a good amount. They are not cheap, you could say. And also I wanna give a shout out to Max Aroma for sponsoring this video, for providing these to give away. If you're unaware of Max Aroma, I'll leave a link in the description. Make sure to check them out. They're a great fragrance discounter. They've got niche fragrances, designer fragrances, and indie fragrances, and they keep adding new brands all the time. They're completely authentic. They partner up with a lot of these brands specifically. They work hand in hand with them and they have great shipping and great customer service. Okay, let's go ahead and start cracking into these fragrances. These ones right here are the ones that you stand to win. These two are mine. You can't have mine. Okay, let's start things off with Oud Monarch. And by the way, of course, goes without saying, you can find these Bortnikoff fragrances on maxaroma.com now. And also, man, there's, there's a lot to cover. If you buy a full bottle on Max Aroma of any Bortnikoff, then you'll get three eight milliliter size fragrances for free. It's the three that are in the bestseller bundle and the link to that is also in the description. So if you buy a full bottle, you get that for free. And that's actually pretty substantial. You can check the cost if you want. Okay, Oud Monarch, finally. Let's get started. Goes without saying that Oud Monarch is an Oud-based fragrance, and a lot of these fragrances you'll notice are very dark. Mm -mm. So if you're gonna spray your white clothing, yeah, maybe, maybe think twice about that. This one is a chocolatey, syrupy oud, some light animalic tones underneath that, and florals sprinkled throughout. It's warm, it's comforting, you get some tobacco leaf as it dries down, also some spices that come out and join the oud and join the floral notes from the opening in the mid. I will say that this one can be a little divisive, it's not gonna be for everybody. It is potentially challenging in the complexity, especially if you're not used to fragrances like this, could turn away some people. It is fantastic in my opinion though, great for fall, great for winter. And regarding the giveaway, stay tuned, I'll go over how to enter that just a little bit later. Next up, Musk Habib. Now this one, super interesting, as soon as you spray it on. This one is very different. It's got a creamy muskiness as soon as you spray it on. It has a soft vanilla and then a lang, -lang that you can pick up right away. As it dries down, you get this smooth ambergris that comes out, a little bit of woodiness as well, kind of creeps from the background and becomes more prominent, more noticeable as it dries down, and that melts with the musk and the vanilla. Day or night fragrance, fall, spring, winter for me, and this one, this one is exquisite. This is one of the best of the full bunch. Up next, L'Air Exquise. Hey, how do you like that pronunciation? Nailed it. L'Air Exquise. Yeah. So this one has kind of a medicinal rubbery opening. It's not gonna be for everybody, that's for sure. There are florals and once again, oud that you can pick up on pretty much right away. And that medicinal rubbery kind of feel carries on for a while into the mid. Once it does settle down though, you start to get more of a resinous feel, some warmth, some sweetness, and also cacao comes out. It becomes more powdery and ambery as it dries down and tulu balsam plays a big part in that dry down. Opening, challenging, dry down, nice. Up next, Amber Cologne. So this one you would probably think is gonna be really warm, resinous, sweet, more of a fall and winter time fragrance. It is not. Not at all, actually. This one is really fresh and tropical, actually. There's a frangipani note that you can pick up right away, very sweet floral with a bunch of mixed citrus. 
The citrus is bright and airy, smells perfect for spring and summer, and there's also a fantastic jasmine note that you can pick up as well. As it dries down, you get a bit of woodiness that comes out, a mild woodiness, and a smattering of ambergris. This smells awesome. Up next, Vesna Cologne. So Amber Cologne, now Vesna Cologne. This I do not like as much as Amber Cologne. It doesn't really work for me all that well. The citrus in the opening has something off-putting to it. It's kind of hard to describe. The black tea lends an interesting edge to the citrus, but as it dries down, at times the fragrance smells waxy or, or damp, and overall it's just not something that works for me. Usually I like fragrances that have a green facet to them. That's actually one of my favorite things in fragrances, but the green facets in Vesna Cologne just don't work. It is certainly unique though, so it's got that going for it. Now this next one though, I do love a lot. It is Vetiver Nocturne. Now, I'm a big Vetiver fan. I've said that a million times on this channel, and I love the way vetiver is used here. Once again, like many fragrances in the Bortnikoff lineup, there is a prominent floral aspect to the fragrance. And here, the floral notes combine to come across bright and uplifting and with just the right touch of sweetness. There's frangipani, champaka, neroli, and jasmine used in this fragrance, and they all provide this almost zingy contrast to the more earthy, woody, rooty vetiver. You also get pops of sandalwood, oud, and ambergris as it dries down. Those are notes that you see used very often, again, in Bortnikoff fragrances. And here, it is done perfectly. Everything works, it is amazing. This stuff is awesome. Next up, Symphony di Neroli. Now, this fragrance, you see Neroli, and you probably think, oh, okay, yeah, I know how Neroli smells. Neroli Portofino, bright Neroli. You know, it's used all over the place, all the time. So you're expecting this white floral fragrance, very fresh, very clean, with a citric sort of feel. Mm, no. See the color there? Yeah. This is actually, believe it or not, one of the dirtiest fragrances out of all the ones I'm gonna talk about here today. Yeah, the Neroli scent. It's not overpoweringly so, but the oud here has a bit of a barnyard or fecal feel to it. Yeah, there's some stank to it. Some skank, some stanky skank. Like I said, it's not necessarily overpoweringly skanky, but it definitely has a dirty feel to it in the opening. There's clementine in the opening. There's also neroli, so there are clean, sweet facets to it, citrus facets, but for me, they pretty much get swallowed up. And as it dries down, surprisingly, it becomes less dirty and becomes more based around oud and ambergris, a semi-sweet oud, actually. But the opening is gonna be off-putting for a lot of people with this one. It's gonna be really divisive. It's not bad, but it's not one that I personally would wear. Next up, Sayat Nova. This stuff, ooh, good. Was that weird? I feel like it was. This one is eye-opening. When I sprayed this on the first time, I was like, whoa, double take, what was that? It's a boozy, sweet vanilla and apricot mixture in the opening. It almost smells like you're making a sauce and you're reducing apricot, you're reducing fruit in the pan, and you've mixed it with uh, some sort of liquor in the pan. Like you're making a really sweet, syrupy sauce. And I love, love the opening. I think that it's fantastic. As it dries down, again, get some oud. In this fragrance, the oud is more like chocolatey, like a chocolatey, woody type vibe. So you're not really gonna get that dirty, stanky stuff going on with this one. Up next, we've got oud maximus. Powerful. And this is gonna be for lovers of oud rose fragrances. That's one of the all-time combos in perfumery. Oud plus rose, a lot of times also saffron. But if you love types of scents like that, oud rose scents, gotta check this out. In the opening of the fragrance, there is a little bit of an animalic vibe. Now, I've worn this on skin multiple times and I'm not off put by it. I don't think it smells all that bad. I don't think it's all that funky, but I have seen some people say that to them it is. So be aware, there's a little bit of an animalic tinge in the opening, and if you don't like fragrances that do have a little bit of an animalic funk to them, 
it may not be for you. There's also a sweet orange in the opening, so you do get a little contrast. You get a little bit of, of orange in the opening to help you through that animalic touch, but uh, it's, not, it's not all that prominent. It's not really a big orange blast. As it dries down, you get more florals mixing in with the rose. You get some spiciness. Of course, that oud carries on. Once you get through the opening, this stuff is super easy to wear. It is highly wearable. It's just that initial part of the fragrance's lifespan that might give some people a little trouble. It smells really, really good though. And once it dries down, the stuff is fantastic. And last but not least of the fragrances I'm giving away, Oud Sinharaja. This is a fragrance by the name that you would probably think is gonna be like a lot of the ones here, more for fall and winter, very heavy and oody, but it is not. This one is very fresh and zesty. It's a sparkling citrus in the opening, mixing once again with floral notes, and it's some of the ones that you've heard me say a number of times, frangipani, uh, jasmine, and neroli. It leans a little bit feminine, but it smells fantastic. It's got a tropical feel to it, actually. It smells like a fragrance you would wear to the beach or on vacation. And that one is really well done. It stands apart from a lot of the other fragrances because it is, again, so tropical leaning when all these other ones are very heavy and dense. And now these two really quickly that I do own full bottles of. First up, Triad. This is amazing, amazing stuff. It's another fragrance that's based around rose and oud, so it really kind of goes head to head with oud maximus. Between the two, probably take this one. This one has this pungency, which I mean in a good way. It, it's just boom, <laughs> right in your face. It's, it's rich, it's dark, it's mysterious, it's a little bit sweet. It's a fantastic scent. I've actually been planning a review on this for a while, so I won't say too much else about the scent. Uh, but as far as rose oud fragrances go, this is right up toward the best that I have ever smelled. And then last but not least, Coup de Food. Coup de, coup de food. Food? Foudre. Foudre. Coup de foudre. Now, this one I got blind initially when I first got it. I wasn't a huge fan. It actually had to grow on me over multiple wearings. It opens up a little bit dusty, so in the initial opening, didn't really like it a whole lot. Once it settles in, it becomes more based around citrus and floral notes. It does lean very, very slightly feminine for me. It has champaka, jasmine, and rose, and as it dries down, you get a little bit of woodiness and spiciness as well. It's a very solid fragrance, but I wouldn't put it up there with the best of the house. So there is a quick rundown, as quick as I could make it, of 12 different fragrances from Bortnikoff. Overall, the quality is fantastic. Lots of these fragrances are just amazing. Yes, there are a few that I wouldn't wear and that I don't really care for particularly, but for the most part, they are great. Giveaway time. So here is how it's gonna work. You have to be subscribed to the channel. You have to like the video. You have to leave a comment below saying you want to enter the giveaway. Here's what I need you to do. Give me your number one choice and your number two choice. That's all you gotta do. I'm gonna choose two winners. If you're the first winner, you will for sure get your number one choice, and then I'll put others in there along with that. If you're the second winner, and your number one choice is already taken by the first person, you'll get your number two choice, guaranteed, and then I'll put the uh, other fragrances in there with it to even it out. That's how it'll go. You'll for sure get one of these, either your number one or number two choice. The others I'll just put in randomly. So you will get five of these travel size eight milliliter samples, if you want to call them that, whatever, of Bortnikoff fragrances. And realistically, that should last you a pretty good time and will definitely give you a good insight into the quality of the house. Again, shout out to Max Aroma for sponsoring this giveaway. Hopefully the two of you out there that win really appreciate those. Again, link below to Max Aroma to Bortnikoff and also a link to that uh, bundle that you'll win if you buy a bottle. So there we go. We made it to the end, yes. If you've smelled Bortnikoff fragrances, feel free to let me know what you think about them in the comments below, but also remember to put the giveaway stuff in there if you wanna be entered in that. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.